I'm not sure where Tozer keeps going, but somehow he keeps disappearing on me. You see, I know, at least I think I know, that I record Tozer teachings. Somehow, between recording and posting, I think I'm losing some of them. <laughs> Praise the Lord. God knows where they're at, and God uses them wherever they are. But it's interesting that I was looking at today's Tozer, you know, and it was kind of very good, you know, and how God is able to do things for us and with us and about us and defend us even. And I was thinking about that, how God is our defense. And it reminded me recently of a letter I got in the mail. It was an interesting letter, you know, it was not my normal bill collector's letters. <laughs> Because I have one bill collector that's been following me and changing who the service is over and over and over again as I've lived in many different states and many different places around the country. And it was education. You know those kind of things. You know those loans you get in order to go to school, you know, and you got to pay them back, you know, the student loans thing, you know, and all of that junk that they do. Well. A long time ago, you know, when I came back from Israel, I went to a place called Computer Learning Center. There used to be computer learning centers like IT&T, you know, you hear a lot of commercials for IT&T, you know, Institute Technology Institute, or ITT, something like that. You know, computer center, they're teaching you about computers. And you hear about those ads, you know, and stuff. But Computer Learning Center was huge. They were big on the East Coast, big on the West Coast. They had computer learning centers all the way across the coast. They were huge complexes. They had lots of people taking student loans out, getting outrageous financing and being able to go to school and to get a degree. I personally went after the networking engineering degree and I was probably within two weeks of graduating. And suddenly I went to school and the door was closed. It was locked. There was no notification. We waited around for a little while, and then finally someone said, well, go on the web here, look at this. And when we did, we found out they got busted. As a matter of fact, when I went on the web, I found out Computer Learning Center had been busted before for abuse, and that they had appealed, and they were going through this thing with the court systems when the federal courts ruled against them and shut them all down in one day all the way across the nation. All of the computer learning centers were shut down instantly. Well, by golly, you know, we were all kind of like shocked because we had spent this money and we didn't know what to do. So we went on the web, you know, and sure enough, there was eventually, not right away, there was a site of how to get in touch with, you know, this process of appealing this and doing this and doing that and going through all these different things, you know, and so I did it, just like everybody else. You know, we filled out the paperwork and you know we sent it in. You know, we got back these responses. It's okay, you know, because especially for us in California, if you don't get your education, you don't know. I mean, that was one of the state edicts that have been passed in the California state legislature that if you pay good money, you know, if you took out a student loan, you were what they call forbearance. You didn't owe any money. So we found that, you know, and all of us, you know, we talked to each other and told each other, you know, about it. And so sure enough, you know, we filled out the paperwork, sent it in, you know, and just like typical with the state or with whoever was in charge of it, some of them, fortunately, don't know anything. But for the last 10 years, they kept saying, I did. I kept saying, no, I don't. <laughs> and the humorous part is, Someone told me a long time ago, he said, well, get a lawyer. I said, no, I'm not. I refiled and at different times had, you know, told these different departments about, you know, whoever it was that got passed on the next thing. I said, look, this is what happened. I filled out the paperwork. This I sent in. This is where I sent it in. And then at different times I finally, you know, changed computers and lost my files and whatever because I'm not the best at keeping all of my records. <laughs> but I likewise found myself dealing with the world in its ways. And you know, it wasn't working. Everything they told me to do seemed like a bunch of noise. Like that noise. You know, noise that really is obnoxious. I 
kept getting these letters in the mail. I kept getting these. She said the same thing that everybody else had told me. Get a lawyer. And I said, I don't need a lawyer. I know I'm right. They're wrong in their paperwork. I said, I know how computers work. Somebody didn't you know, process it, didn't enter the information. Somehow, they're wrong. But I'm not going to fight it. I don't need to. So for about 10 years, you know, I've had this thing always following me about ruining my credit. You know, it's like, who cares? I don't care about credit. That's the world in its ways. I'm not into that. You know, sorry, it just doesn't work that way for me. But finally, just within the last two weeks, I get this letter in the mail. Ha! Huh, such a deal. Of course, recently, I mean, I'm surprised. I have, about a month ago, or maybe it was three weeks ago, I got jury duty. That was a shock. I've never had jury duty. It was kind of fun. But about a week ago, I got um, a letter in the mail. Your student loan. Here's what you owed. Here's what the interest is. You owe nothing. And I went, no kidding. <laughs> Duh. Took you 13 years to figure that one out, huh? <laughs> like I've been saying it all along. And that's the point. I knew I had done everything I could do and committed it unto the Lord and as well as doing the paperwork that in the world you have to do. You have to fill out the paperwork. You have to go through the process. You know, and Though I was two weeks short of graduating, I still owed nothing because of the way the law is written, that the structure, and it was right, because technically they hold my my uh, credentials, so to speak, you know, in limbo, you know, because they won't give me my graduation, you know, because I was two weeks short. And because they recede back the state in that confiscation of computer learning centers ill-gotten way of using student loans because they were actually siphoning off money. They had given all the students carte blanche when it came to, hey, you know what? If you didn't graduate, you don't owe. Bingo. If you don't get the, the fulfillment of your contract, so to speak, then your education wasn't paid for. We're not paying for it. And so you don't owe. And so the state of California finally declared me and sent me a letter that someone, I guess, somewhere in the back past, you know, had finally gotten to some agency that said, hey, wait a minute. Look at this guy. This guy went to this computer learning, this is what the debt is? He doesn't know this. And they figured it out, you know, kind of worked it out and put it in their computer and probably wrote it off, you know, like most corporations do, and sent me a letter in the mail and a nice letter. And I said, huh, like I need a lawyer? <laughs> and that's kind of what it's like with being guilty. You are or you aren't. But someone needs to represent you. And I knew that I was guiltless, or guilt, no, I was guiltless, and that I had committed it unto the Lord to say, look, God, you know, it's bugging me. And I had prayed about that recently, and I said, you know, Lord, it's bugging me. I need you to take care of this. And he did. Sent me a letter that says, hey, no problem. And I went, wow, 13 years later, you know. So trust in the Lord sometimes, and don't worry about, like in California, people are so happy. You don't have to get a lawyer every time you turn around and think that you have to do something because you have a lawyer. You have your Father in Heaven who is watching out for you to begin with, but you also have someone else in Heaven who's looking out for you. You see, Jesus is seated at the right hand of the Father, and He's making intercession for you on your behalf. That means even the littlest details of maybe if something, little paperwork that, you know, is bugging you, that, you know, you kind of feel like, hey, you know, I'm tired of getting these bill collector notices, you know, I think it's time that they got this thing right, you know, because I know I'm right. And instead of fighting with them and getting phone calls, 
I said, no, I'm not dealing with you. You know, fine, I've gone through this. I'm not getting a lawyer. I'm not going to show you everything, you know. I've already dealt my part. Now, your part, I don't know about. But then I took it to God's part, which is what a lot of us don't do. We should always, as the Bible says, not sue our brother or sue each other in court because then we're put before the judge and the judge determines what it is and you could wind up in jail. So you pay, as Jesus said, the last farthing. But commit yourself unto the Lord and then trust him and let him work it out and then go and try to reconcile yourself with your brother by doing the things you're supposed to do. And I have. And so I was glad to see that because it reminded me of how we can trust in our strength and it'll fail. We could trust in our guns, like recently there's a lot of gun control going on and the gun may jam or fail. We could trust in, you know, some other situation or circumstances and they will fail. But you know, he that trusts in the Lord will never fail because God will bring about the results that he wants, not necessarily what we want. The plan of redemption is that God has not abandoned man. God was manifested in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, and received up into glory. 1 Timothy 3.16 For mankind, the earth has become the symbol of death and mortality. Now I know some people think Mother Earth is a beautiful place, you know, and that the Grand Canyon, like a pastor just recently mentioned, I think about him, is like a pretty cool notion, but he said, you know, when you've been to heaven, you know, and then you look at the Grand Canyon, it's a hole in the ground. I mean, let's be real, you know, I mean, come on. The Grand Canyon may look wonderful from our perspective, but really it's just a big hole in the ground, isn't it? But in the very face of this, the Christian still knows for certain that God has not forgotten him. Man who was made in the image of God has not been forsaken. God promised a plan to restore that which has been made in his image, and that restoration is you. Only that creature whom he called man did God make in his own image and likeness. Now you need to think about that sometimes because there's some people that really think dogs go to heaven or cats go to heaven or because you love that little cuddly thing, you know, like these guys right here in front, you know. Oh, my little stuffed animal. I'm sure there's a stuffed animal heaven too. I don't think so. And I'm sure not going to put a dress on this stuffed animal or, you know, decorate it. But people do that with dogs and cats and monkeys and chimpanzees and whatever they do it with. That's weird. It's an idol. It's stupid. Quit. Don't do it. <laughs> you were created in God's image, put on the likeness of Jesus. That's what you should do. But I know some people get, you know, all cuddly, fuzzy feelies, you know, and they want to have something that they can, like, you know, kind of snuggle up to until it dies on them. <laughs> then what are you going to do? I'm going to mourn them, and I'm going to build them a mausoleum because I loved them so much. And that's what people do. What can I say? Oh, well. But only that creature whom he called man did God make it his own image and likeness. So when man failed and sinned and fell, God said, I will go down and help him now. God came down to visit us in the form of a man. For in Jesus we have the incarnation. God manifest in the flesh. God himself came down to this earthly island of man's grief and assumed our loss and took upon himself our demerits and took upon himself our failings and took upon himself our weakness and in so doing redeemed us back unto himself. Jesus Christ, the King of glory, the everlasting Son of the Father, in his victory over sin and death opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. All that would believe on his name, that would call upon him and be saved. Beyond his death and resurrection and ascension, the present work of Jesus is twofold. One, it is to be an advocate above, a lawyer, a risen savior with high priestly office at the throne of God, and the ministry of preparing a place for his people in the house of his father and our father as well. Hey, I'm going to go make up the spare room. Well, sort of. That's kind of what he's doing for you right now, making up a room for you to be with him always so that you're there and he's there and you'll never be alone. But what the Bible teaches is what the Christian church believes and the essence of the doctrines of the Christian church relating to atonement and salvation. You don't need a lawyer. You got one. 
man, do I got one. Because, you see, I don't know the law. I know about the law. I know what the law does to me. But I really don't know all about the law. So I need a lawyer. Sort of. At least one that knows the law. It'd be even better if I could get a lawyer that wrote the law. So that not only does the lawyer know the law, but if he wrote the law, he knows what the law was meant to do, so he could take care of the law for me. You know what? Funny you should say it that way, because the lawgiver is Jesus, and he's your lawyer. Imagine that. He wrote the law, he gave the law, and he fulfilled the law. I'd say from beginning to end, God, as your lawyer, can take care of the law.